Hello and welcome to What's Pissing You Off Wednesday for February 9th, 2022. What's Pissing You Off Wednesday is where I, Kevin McTaggart, rant and react to whatever is pissing you off. I should say rant or react. And or react to whatever is pissing you off. So, there we go. Um, because sometimes, let's face it, sometimes you people give me contributions and I can't in good faith rant about it on your behalf. So, you, you have a 50-50 chance if you, you know, send me a contribution that I'll either rant about it for you or react to it against you. Okay, are we for, for or against? I'll either be for or against. Those are actually the two options. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about in this episode. This is a terrible introduction. And I wanted it to keep it short, but it's already over a minute. And that pisses some people off. But if it pisses you off, you can contribute. And how can you contribute? You can look at the instructions in the show notes. You can also go to mctaggartattack.com slash Wednesday and contribute there as well. But that instruction is also in the show notes. I would like to see more people contribute through mctaggartattack.com, to be honest, because I'm sick of using Facebook. Anyway, let's get to this week's contributions. I like to call them contributions. I guess that's technically what they are, but, you know, it's just, it makes it sound more um, official or charity-like or church-like or, because you're, you're coming to church and confessing about what's pissing you off. I, we should just get to the contributions. The first one is from Vanessa Thomas. She's pissed off at the way she thinks and how people respond to it. I don't really know what the hell she means with that. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe the way she thinks is just different from most people and people react to it in a way that angers her. That is annoying. You know, why should we try to change people with how they think. People can think whatever they want to think. You know, people will have their opinions. People should be able to say whatever the hell they want. And we can either like it or not like it. There are repercussions, of course, depending on what you're saying and what you think. But still, it's like, it is frustrating when you have to like, when you try to tell people how you feel about things and then people don't react to it the way that you thought that they would or the way that they think that you should. And that's, that's aggravating. That's, but that's awful. We should, I wish that we lived in a world where we could just respect people's opinions, but we don't. We live in a world now where, um, anyone's opinion different from ours is a criminal offense. Not quite there yet, but I feel like we're almost there. Like, if you don't agree with me, then we can't be friends anymore. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. If, if you don't agree with me, that's fine. I don't want people that are going to agree with me all the time. It's good to have differing opinions. Because sometimes those differing opinions make you realize that you've been looking at something wrong, you know? And it's just, it's just frustrating that we, we live in a world where now um, everybody gives their opinion. But no one wants, no, <laughs> this is good. Everybody gives their opinion. But we all hate everyone else's opinion is what it seems like we're at 
is what it seems like we're doing. We're all giving out our opinions. But when we get other people's opinions that are different than ours, we hate those people. And that's a fucking terrible way to live. We should all be ashamed of ourselves for, for not respecting other people's opinions. We should be respecting other people's opinions, no matter what. And we'd be a such, we'd be a much better society if we just, you know, respected our opinions. If we just, we'd be a much better society if we respected everyone's opinions. Or not necessarily respected it, but just like, we'd be a much better society if we listened to each other's opinions. We don't have to respect them, but we should be able to listen and see what they have to say. And try to understand what they're saying. Instead of going after them just because it's different than ours. That's what I think. I just think we need to listen to each other more. Instead of yelling at each other. Because that's what it seems like happens. Especially during presidential election season. Which lasts about three and a half years. Anyway. So better now after ranting about that for a few minutes. So thank you for that, Vanessa. Appreciate it. Um, these are all from Facebook this week, by the way, because Twitter sucks. Yeah, Twitter sucks. Um, no one on Twitter gave me a contribution. Or if they did, it was a very general thing, like, um... You know, just like one word or something like that. Some people even, I get this a lot on Twitter. Like, I, nothing's pissing me off today. Bullshit. What drugs are you on if nothing's pissing you off today? Honestly. Anyway, let's get to the next contribution. Um, Wesley Zebrowitz. She's pissed off at client telling us he wants to review our work before we file it. Leslie gives us, gives me a lot of contributions about her law office that she works at. And I don't know how other law offices are. Because she's, I think, my only friend that works at a law office. But all of her clients are idiots. I don't know. Is that, can someone else who's listening to this and if you work at a law office, can, can you can you reach out to me, mctigertattack at gmail dot com, and tell me, does does every client, is every client at a law office an idiot? I just, I just want to know because it seems like every every time she tells me about a client, they're an idiot. This guy, this this, and this guy. Wants to look over everything before they file it? For what? You're just gonna have to, you're gonna be asking about a ton of questions that you know nothing about. What are you gonna do? Give your final approval before the lawyer files it? That's not how it works. The lawyer knows what they're doing. You know, know why you're, what you're doing. That's why you, having the lawyer do it for you, you dumb fuck. But seriously, if anybody out there works in the law office, are all your clients idiots? Are all lawyers' clients idiots? I might turn that into this week's title, but I might not. I don't know what the title is going to be until like two days from now, from when I edit this episode up, so... Uh, but yeah, if somebody can tell me if all clients, if all, <laughs> do you have to be an idiot to be a lawyer? Wait, that's not right. No, that's not what you said. Do you have to be an idiot to need a lawyer? I guess is a good question. That's what I'm trying to say. This is a raw thing that I do on what's pissing you off when I say I don't really edit it except to put the graphics up. 
but um, it's slowly progressing into something and I might edit it more. I don't know. We'll see. But what I'm saying is when I rant about these things, this is the first time I've actually read them. So it's just my blind, raw, re angry reaction to these things. So that's what you're getting here. But thank you for the contribution, Leslie. Robert John Leet is pissed off that he has a truck, but people who think they are entitled because they have a big truck. Nobody cares you wasted $600 on a lift kit. I don't know what a lift kit is, but I think what, what, what Robert's trying to get to here is people with big trucks who are assholes. Why is it everyone who has a big truck is an asshole? I don't understand. Is it, is, is there something to do? Is it the bigger the truck, the smaller the penis? Is that what it is? I think that's what it is. I think the, the size of your genitalia and the size of your truck, the larger your truck, the smaller your genitalia, I think, right? That's typically what is, because he has another thing here, like people in large trucks who like cut off who cut you off on the road on a snow-filled road. They just, just, these people with large trucks think they can just drive anywhere or park anywhere. And some of these dicks just fill up multiple spaces when they don't really have to. And they drive around and they're afraid that someone's going to hit their truck. If you're, if you're afraid someone's going to hit your truck, then, then don't have a big truck. And if you have a big truck, know how to drive the big truck. It's that simple. It's that damn simple. It's that freaking simple. Just, just seriously, I, I see it a lot with like people with like the big trucks, especially the people with the nut sacks on the trucks. What's that about? That's creepy. I don't get that. Why, why we, why, why do we have those on the trucks? I don't understand. I don't want to understand. I should Google it. I might Google it later. I'm not really sure, but it's just, it's just, it's disgusting to see. It's, it's, I don't get it. And what are you trying to tell us? How macho you are with how big your truck is? No, whenever I see someone with a huge truck, I just assume that they have a small penis. And they act like an asshole. I mean, there are exceptions, of course, but I mean, most of the time, if you have a large truck, you're a huge dick, but you don't have a huge dick. But thank you for the contribution. Our next contribution is from Pierre Vachon. He's pissed off at people using their horoscope sign as an excuse for being assholes. As a Taurus and someone who's um, notoriously uh, stubborn and holds grudges and everything associated with being a Taurus, it does piss me off that there are other people who, like, whenever they act like a jerk, they say, Oh, I'm sorry, I'm an Aries. I'm sorry, I'm a Capricorn. I'm sorry, I'm a Sagittarius. It's just the way I'm a Gemini, you know. There's two sides to me. Shut up. Stop using your horoscope sign as a crutch. Stop using your horoscope as an excuse for being an asshole. Right, stop using your horoscope as an excuse to be a jerk. Honestly, nobody cares. We we know you're a jerk. You don't your horoscope has nothing to do with you being a jerk. Okay? Your horoscope has nothing to do with you being an asshole. Just own up to your behavior by yourself. Don't blame the stars. Don't blame astrology for your, for the way you are. It's just the way you are. You know, it's just, it's just, don't, don't blame astrology on the fact that you're a jerk. Okay, let's, let's, let's stop doing that. Let's stop using the horoscope as our, as our guide to lead us through life. Because most of the time the horoscopes are wrong anyway. 
they're so generalized and they don't really mean that much, but I still like to think that I'm a Taurus and I'm fine with that, but I'm just like, don't, don't you use your horoscope for good, not bad. Don't use your horoscope to cover up your problems. Stop blaming your horoscope. The problem is not the horoscope. Your problems aren't your horoscope. Your problems are you. So just stop blaming your horoscope and be your better person. Idiots. Thank you for the contribution, Pierre. Um, the last one we have today is from G.W. Foley. He's pissed off that his vehicle is covered in a cocoon of snow and I don't want to go outside to clear it off. To be honest, I just do not want to go outside. I don't blame you. We both live in Vermont. It's fucking cold outside. And um, you don't have a job, so you probably have nowhere to go anyway. So you're probably going to laugh your ass off at me talking about all this. But yeah, just... Uh, Good for you, though, for, like, not wanting to go outside. Because, like, this, this, I, I think about this, because this pisses me off. Is uh, the people who do the bare minimum when it comes to clearing off the snow. You know, the people that just clear off, like, the front window and then the back window. And then they have snow, like, inches of snow on the hood on top of the car and around the windows. But they don't actually brush off all the snow. You're supposed to clear off as much snow as you can. And if you can't clean the snow off your car, then you might as well keep your ass at home. You know, it's, it's, it's just frustrating. Whenever I see people after a snowstorm, or like days after a snowstorm, I'll see people driving and they've barely... Um, brushed off enough to look through the window. And it just gets me aggravated every time I see it. The hell is wrong with you people? If you can't brush off your car, then don't go outside. Or if you don't want to go, if you don't want to brush off your car, then don't go outside. It's just so frustrating whenever I see these idiots out here and they don't brush off their car, yet they're driving down the highway. There are laws in New Hampshire and Vermont about how you have to brush, the, you have to remove the snow from your car so it doesn't fly off and cause an accident. Because that's what happens if you don't brush off your car properly. You could cause an accident. You could kill someone if you don't brush off your car. That's kind of drastic, but that's the truth. It could fucking happen. So brush off your damn car. Or if you're not going to brush off your car, like GW, just stay at home until April or May. Whenever the hell the snow finally brushes off. Or by the time the snow evaporates. Anyway. Thank you for the contribution, GW. And thanks everyone who contributed to this week's episode of What's Pissing You Off Wednesday. Um, please, uh... If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, please subscribe, rate, and review. And if you're watching it on YouTube, please um, hit the like button on the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Happy What's Pissing You off Wednesday, everybody. <laughs>